Hello there. Welcome back to my channel. I was away for a while. How have you been? If you are a regular viewer of the channel, then you must have noticed that I have a Sony PVM monitor which has a defective front input panel. The buttons in the front do not work and I have to use bodge wires on the remote input at the rear to force the monitor to show a particular input signal. Today, I'm going to show you how I solved this issue by creating my own IR remote control for the PVM CRT monitor using an Arduino. If you have an older PVM CRT, you may have encountered similar issues with the front panel buttons not working, making it difficult to control the device. In such cases, creating an IR remote control using an Arduino can be a great and cost-effective solution. The theory is quite simple. My Sony PVM CRT has a DC jack to output 5 volts. We can use this to power our Arduino. To build the controller module, we'll connect the infrared receiver to the Arduino's digital input pin which will detect the IR command sent by the remote. The Arduino can then simply ground the required pins on the remote input. To build the control module, we can use an Arduino Uno or any other microcontroller. Uh, we'll also need an 8-core CDAT multi-cable to control the remote input. Then we need the connector to connect to the PVM input. Uh, then we also need an infrared receiver and remote control kit. You can get this from AliExpress. Uh, we'll also need to power the Arduino. For this, I'm using a USB-C to USB-B cable and also a simple connector jack which will connect to the DC output from the PVM. I'll also use a small translucent box to house the entire Arduino microcontroller. To start building the remote receiver, I unsheathed, pretend and soldered the 8 core multi-cable to the 8 pin DIN uh, connector. It was a little tricky but not too difficult and it came out really well. I then started to assemble the connector, uh, but then I realized that uh, the shield is actually connected to the ground. So I thought uh, it is better to use some Kapton tape to prevent it from shorting to the pins. And I used a little bit of Kapton tape on both the uh, sides of the shields and then I just reassembled the connector. And it was a pretty easy job, I mean it's, it's really easy, you can just figure it out by looking at what parts go where, looking at the holes and looking at uh, si simple markings on, on, on the connector. So it, it was pretty easy and it came out really really well. Next I installed the infrared receiver to the Arduino. Uh, I used the 5 volt and ground pins and used pin number 11 for the signal input pin and then I just put everything in the uh, translucent box. Uh, yeah, it looks good. So after putting, after assembling everything, I just connected it to my PC. I then downloaded the IR remote library from the uh, library manager and uh, nowadays it is pretty easy to download a library uh, I, I remember uh, that uh, way back in the past we had to download libraries manually but now it's pretty easy and uh, once the library was downloaded I simply opened the simple receiver.ino example and started modifying it as we know that I used the digital pin 11 on the system as the IR receiver pin, I had to define it using the hash define preprocessor directive. This way it overrides the default value which is being used by this example. And once uh, I uploaded the sketch to Arduino, I found that I'm able to receive all the commands from that IR remote. Uh, this video has been sped up a bit, but I'll explain the things to you in simpler terms. 
essentially we have a pin system where we can ground any pin to send a command to the pvm and what i did was simply map the pins to arduino digital output pins and then save all those uh, states of these pins as an array as an integer array and save that array in the eprom so that next time when the arduino turns on the previous state can be loaded and uh, whenever there's a change this change state can be saved to that eprom so that's it i did some testing fixed all the bugs which i could find in the code and then uploaded the sketch to the arduino i soldered the 8 core multi cable to the arduino and connected it to the pvm as shown on the screen and as soon as i turned it on i see that uh, the remote option also gets turned on so that is the default state and uh, then i start using my remote and voila everything works so yeah if i want to turn off the remote i can simply hit ok and the remote will go off and then uh, the front panel which is broken gets activated so i turn it back on and then i can use uh, the first three buttons to switch between line a line b and uh, also uh, the four and five buttons switch between rgba and rgbb uh, connections uh, the third button switches on and off the tally light so uh, <laughs> that is a cool neon green tally light that the first time i turn it on and uh, the sixth button uh, sets the mode to overscan mode so yeah that is cool yes now i do not need to go to the rear end of the pvm monitor every time i want to change the input source i can simply pick up the remote and change it from anywhere in the room this product is a great example of how technology can be used to solve real world problems thank you for watching and be sure to check out my other videos for more diy projects on retro computing and gaming